Hey everyone, it's Bizcord, and a lot of weird things is happening in 2022. I think just like the moment we hit 2020, all shit hit the fan. And 2022 is no different. Recently, we have found an article that came out last week, two weeks ago. And the article was busy talking about how a Japanese quote-unquote killing stone splits in two, releasing superstitions amid the sulfur springs. Now, what were the superstitions? Apparently, the corpse of a evil nine-tailed spirit was in inside that supposed killing stone. Now that means a nine-tailed beast, a nine-tailed evil spirit is roaming around in this world. And I just wanted to talk about a lot of things. For example, the whole fact that this is going down. We're going to read an article from The Guardian because that's where I got the source from. And not only that, I want to kind of like talk about the implications that will come with a whole nine-tailed spirit being out and about in the modern day world. So first we're going to read through this article because I'm curious to see what it says and I saw like IGN posted on their Instagram. It says Japanese killing stone splits into releasing superstitions amid the sulfur springs. Legend has it that there's an evil spirit trapped inside the Seishoseki stone. So what happens now that the stone is broken, right? Shows us a picture. It says Tamamo no Mai. I actually kind of really like that name. Tamamo no Mai. <laughs> Anyways, Tamamo no Mai confronted by a warrior after she turned into an evil fox with nine tails. Okay, the killing stone said to contain her body in Japan has split. Now, predictions of dark forces being unleashed by an evil vixen hung over social media in Japan on Monday after famous volcanic rock said to kill anyone who comes in contact with it has been found split in two. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of worried about this, you know? <laughs> Not only is it just a rock that kills anybody that touches it. It also, uh, I don't know, the, the way I'm processing this information is kind of like, how, how did it break? Let's just continue reading. According to mythology surrounding Seishoseki or Killing Stone, the object contains the transformed corpse of Tamama no Mai, a beautiful woman. Ooh, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, a beautiful woman. Hey, okay. I'm gonna come. <laughs> who had been part of a secret plot hatched by the feudal warlord to kill Emperor Toba, who reigned from 1107 to 1123. Uh, legend has it that her true identity was an evil nine-tailed fox whose spirit is embedded in a hunk of larva located in the area of Tochigi Prefecture near Tokyo, famous for its sulfurous hot springs. Now, now, now. Thing is, what makes me more excited about this is because when the first, well, when the information first came out, like when it came out about a week ago, I think it was like a week or two ago, I was exercising with my friend on a call. And literally the moment I read the article, one of the first things I suspected out of the demon that could have popped up, I was like, the first, exactly, I remember this. I said, the first demon that could have come out was a kitsune or a nine-tailed fox. Because at the time when I was thinking about it, a nine-tailed fox was the only mythological being that popped up into my head. And now, basically, the fact that we have a demon out and about in the world means we might as well have a Jujutsu Kaisen Shibuya arc. Shibuya incident arc is going to happen in real life. That's basically what's going to happen. And for those people who have not either watched Jujutsu Kaisen or haven't read it to know what the Shibuya arc is, don't worry, I'm not gonna spoil. All I can say is shit hits the fan in an astronomical level and the fact that this is an evil spirit a lot of questions pop up into my head for example i wonder if she's either going to get stronger because of the world has become more evil or will she just pop out look at the world as it is and then be like okay the world needs cleansing she starts killing a bunch of people or will she just like walk around gaining minions and followers or will she just fall in love with a human and have kids because i remember there was this one hentai that said uh if you had sex with a, a kitsune then you be blessed for with good luck for the, like the rest of your life so i honestly knowing the amount of weebs that exist i definitely know somebody's going to try and pipe tamama no mai especially if she's a quote-unquote beautiful woman uh yeah that's definitely going to happen or I'm really curious, like, will she be captured by whatever evil spirit sorcerers may exist? Because, again, if she's a mythical beast, then there has to be uh, a mythical force that, like, a mythical team that worked to kind of capture them. Like, Bleach, we have all of the, um, the people like Ichigo and all of them, Rukia, in Noragami, we have the actual gods themselves. In Jujutsu Kaisen, we have Jujutsu Tech. But we have a lot of factions dedicated to hunting down evil spirits, right? And I wonder if that's going to be the same case with this, where 
Kamamon no Mai is already out and she's either already been captured or she's about to cause shit and then she's going to ca get captured. And with that said, actually, we'll get to the implications later on. Now, it says, it's separation into roughly equal parts. That already, that's something I really need to touch on. Equal parts, roughly equal, split down the middle. No, 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 no. That's a bit too, uh, what do I, what do I say? It's too suspicious. It's too coincidental because not only does this happen, right? Not only did this Seisho Seki rock or the Killing Stone break in almost 50-50 portions, immediately not after that, in Japan, we have four people dead after a 7.4 magnitude earthquake hits the coast of Japan. Okay, let, let, let's think about that. And this happened a day ago. Or like news articles about it happened a day ago. Uh, while editing this video, I did research on the Tamamo no Mai situation and the earthquakes that hit Japan again. Apparently, it were two earthquakes that hit Japan of different magnitudes, but two earthquakes hit Japan back to back. So, yeah, you know? <laughs> can we please talk about those implications? Can, or can we please talk about like the coincidences that are happening with Japan? Not only that, tsunami alerts have been issued. Now, I know Japan is kind of known for its earthquakes and its tsunamis. I'm just saying, the timing. You know, the, the, the whole belief of everything happens for a reason or divine timing. That's what I believe is going on. Japan suddenly has this moment where <laughs> the Killing Stone has released an evil demon into the world. And then not long after, like a week after that or two weeks after that, Japan is hit by an earthquake. A 7.4 magnitude earthquake where a tsunami alert has also been issued. And that's said by the Bloomberg article and CNN and BBC. A lot of coincidences are happening, okay? A lot of coincidences. Are, I guess it's like two coincidences. It being split in half and the earthquakes that happened long, not after that. But I feel like, come on. Come on! I, I know a lot of people don't believe in the supernatural. So they'll all like just chuck it up to coincidences. But me, who's kind of like on the fence in terms of spirituality, I'm kind of like, can, can we not ignore this? Like just, just in case it's real, can we not ignore this? However, I am looking forward to an actual Shibuya arc happening in real life. I know a lot of people died during the Shibuya arc in the manga, uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, whatever. A lot of people died in Shibuya. Because Shibuya is also known as or the busiest city in all of Japan. So, I want the Shibuya arc to happen and I know people will be like, okay, that's kind of out of off pocket or it's out of pocket because that means you're kind of also wishing for a lot of people to be dead. However, the reason why I want this Shibuya arc to happen is because of the long-term implications that are going to happen as a result of a real-life Shibuya arc happening. And I will talk about that later on in the video. Go back, it says, uh, separation into two roughly equal parts believed to occur within the past few days have spooked online users who noticed that according to the folklore, the stone continually spews poisonous gas, hence the name. Ah, ooh, ooh. While the stone was said to have been destroyed and its evil exercised uh, by a Buddhist monk who scattered the pieces across Japan. Wait, is it like Sukuna's fingers? Because remember Sukuna was also kind of, I wouldn't say he was exercised, but he was kind of like sealed into his like 20 fingers. And those 20 fingers were kind of scattered across Japan. I wonder if that's the, oh. Oh, that has another implication. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, shit. Ah, oh, see. Now we're going. <laughs> I can't wait to get to the implications of this video. Now, let's see. Many Japanese prefer to believe that its home is in the slopes of Mount Nats Nasu. Okay, visitors to the area, popular sightseeing spot, recoiled in horror <laughs> at the weekend after witnessing posted photos of the fractured stone. A length of rope that had been uh, secured around its circumference lying on the ground. Wait a minute. A length of rope that had been secured around its circumference lying on the ground. Now I know uh, Japan has this like th those sacred ropes that they wrap around trees. Let me just quickly search them. Like I know Orochimaru has them. It's like, yeah, these things. These things. What are they? Yorishiro. Capable of attracting spirits called Kami. Never cut down such a tree uh, in which is believed to be inhabited by spirits because it's thought to bring misfortune. And you see this around a tree or a rock. And this was around the killing stone. And then it was found on the floor. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Shit. Uh, I feel like I've seen something that shouldn't be seen. Yeah, the fact that you saw it as well. The fact that they saw it. Uh-uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is how people get killed. Okay, let's continue reading the article. While others speculated that the demon spirit of Tamama no Mai has been resurrected after almost a thousand years. I'm really getting Roman Sukuna vibes from Jujutsu Kaisen episode 1. After the demon spirit has been released after like a thousand years, then they're like, Oh, I'm finally free. I need to um go sightseeing. Because again, I've been stuck in this rock for... Instead of just like, I need to kill those people that uh, sealed me in this rock. It's more like, I need to do that and go sightseeing. Because I mean, a thousand years, a lot of shit has happened, right? And I doubt Tamamo no Mai is like walking around the streets of Japan just wearing a normal kimono. I'm pretty sure she's going to try and like blend into society as much as possible if if she hasn't possessed a, sp uh, a human being it would be like she's just trying her best to blend in instead of walking around with a kimono where she's sticking out like a sore thumb anyways local media says cracks have appeared in the rocks several years ago possibly allowing rainwater to seep in and weaken the structure i wonder if it was like fate it was destiny for her to be released anyways the stone which was registered as local historic site in 1957 was mentioned in matsubo basho's seminal work the narrow road to the deep north and it was inspired a no play a novel and an anime film uh let's say it was a shame the rock had split what do you mean it's just a shame what do you mean just a shame and the, the implicate oh my god the implications mean it's more than just a sh oh shame the rock had been split because it was a symbol of the area, but agreed that nature had simply taken its course. Local national government officials will meet to discuss the, so the stone's fate. You should be worrying about the fate of Japan. Uh, you'd like to see the Seisho Seki restored to its original form, presumably with its <laughs> demonic inhabitants sealed within. Yeah, definitely. That's what we need to do. We need to find a way to find Tamamo no Mai and shove her back into that rock. Because right now, this ain't it. This ain't it. Now, le le let's jump into the implications of this, shall we? Number one, if Tamamo no Mai is a real, right? What does that mean? for all spiritual beliefs because if Tamama no Mai is alive and walking about she's an evil spirit meaning the spiritual exists meaning specifically Japanese mythology ex exists and when we have Japanese mythology that's a can of worms in itself that means Akuma exists like demons exist Onis or Ogres exist we have fucking Ryomen's Kuna Oh my god, because- Oh shit, I just realized that. Because Ryomans Kuna is an actual mythological character in the Japanese lore. And that's something we should be afraid of. Because let's consider the implications. Because I remember- If I remember correctly, with the Ryomans Kuna mythology, not only did he have, again, four arms, but the whole fact that Ryomans Kuna was- what, what did they say? I think they said Ryomans Kuna was like around 50 feet tall. I don't know why I'm even saying around- Roughly around- we have Google to find out. That means the certain Japanese gods exist. Bishamonten, Ebisu, we have Amaterasu, Koda Matsukami, Izinagi, and Izinami. All of these gods exist. Wait, but that also means what other mythologies exist? Because if this exists, that means also dragons may either do exist currently or may have existed in the past. What other religions and beliefs exist if this is going to be the case? Think about it. And if we have an actual Shibuya arc where Tamamo goes around killing people, actually I also wonder how large her her form will be. Will it be like a super huge form like the Nine Tails in Naruto? Or it'll be like just a nine tailed fox that has the power to kill a lot of people? And if that's the case, will it be covered by media? And when it happens, what does that say for life moving forward? Because then we'll have definitive proof that the supernatural exists in the form of Tamamo. She's there. She exists. And she's causing shit. Meaning, it is clear-cut evidence that the spiritual exists. Will that change science forever? From now, moving forward, what, what religions can we take seriously? What can't we take seriously? What exists? What doesn't exist? How does it affect science? Because now... Science has to take into consideration that f mythology exists. There, there are a lot of implications looking at either religious standpoints, looking at science standpoints, looking at just in general life. Because now if Tamamo starts killing people left, right and center, causing an actual Jujutsu Kaisen Shibuya arc, then it actually becomes a, an incident that would be recorded in the history books. And it will be known worldwide that, oh shit, a lot of people died due to this incident where an evil nine-tailed woman was going around killing people. Uh, I, I don't think I feel comfortable with that. <laughs> and also, here's something that we also need to consider. Knowing the amount of weebs in Japan that are coming out and 
people who kind of like have main character syndrome, right? How many people are gonna flee to Japan to kind of be like the Jujutsu Kaisen sorcerers or Bleach uh, Reapers or whatever? Like, how many people are going to flee to Japan to try learn these mystical techniques in order to fight these spirits and only to get killed while fighting these evil spirits? Can we actually consider that? Because I know a lot of people will either try and stick their dick in Tamamo, because, <laughs> come on, come on. Come on, especially if she was described as a beautiful woman, we know people are gonna try and dick down Tamamo. They're gonna try and dick down a nine-tilled fox. But not only that, a lot of people are going to try and become spirit hunters, which I guess that's cool. But not only is not everybody equipped to be a demon hunter, just a lot of people are gonna die trying to demon hunt. Because again, we're missing with mythological demons. But I really like, oh yeah, here it is. It says here, Roman Skrina, his height varies from 10 feet to 173 feet, depending on descriptions. <laughs> Can we, so if Tamamo is alive and she is real, then Ryomin's Kuna by default has to be real. Meaning we have a 10 foot to 173 foot man with four arms running around Japan. And I also really love the coincidences. I honestly do. Because look, here are the coincidences that I've noticed. So it, it it breaks. Not only that, it breaks in half. Not only that, not long after an earthquake happens in Japan and just in time for the Jujutsu Kaisen movie to come out in sub in like um, west, in the western side of the world. It, it feels like there's divine, <laughs> it's like divine timing. There's something about it that's really itching. It's scratching me the wrong way. Now, I am a person, again, who does not really believe in the spiritual. I'm kind of like on the fence with it. That's why I'm looking at this and I'm like, yeah, sure, it's stupid. Uh, superstition. Superstition. We have almost every right to ignore it because we have no proof that this has existed prior. But if it actually does exist, not only are the implications huge, especially in terms of like religion and science, but my goodness, the amount of lives that could be killed, like that could be lost as a result of Tamamo running around, Skuna running around, other demons running around. I find it fascinating and it's bone chilling. It's kind of it's frightening in a fun way. I mean, I, I, I guess I wouldn't consider it fun when people die as a result. But whoever can seal Tamamo back into her prison, we need your help as soon as possible. But then again, I do want to see like covered on the news where we just see like a kaiju sized nine tailed fox like in the first episode of Naruto just rampaging around areas of Japan. Uh, again, the lives lost will be very, oh no, like sympathy and all of that stuff. We kind of have to help them. We also have to help Ukraine with all of their situation. Like a lot of fucked up shit will be happening. But it's also like, okay, this is happening. This is 2022. Now, whenever we hear stories about myth, like mythological characters and characters being sealed in certain areas, do we kind of have to take that a little bit more seriously? We kind of actually have to take that a little bit more seriously if it tr were to be a real thing. Ooh, actually, I'm kind of curious. Let's let's see um, how Tamamo no Maya has been depicted in mythology. So Tamamo is meant to be a, a beautiful Japanese woman who has the, uh, I don't know, the ability to be a nine-tailed fox. And the thing is, maybe she's not evil. Maybe she's changed after a thousand years. Maybe like being put in the Nazi corner for a thousand years has changed her heart. That's why one of my, my speculations is what if she actually just, instead of being evil, she just finds a human falls in love with them and has kids. Also, would the kids have nine tails? Would the kids be Kitsune as well? Ooh, what would that mean like a new era of like demi-humans? I think there's a, a way too many impl implications that come with Tamama no Mai and her existence. But she is kind of cute though. But her nails! Actually, yeah, if she's possessed a human, does the human contain certain animal features like uh, nine tails? Uh, the ability to have like cat ears, well not cat ears, fox ears, or can like have retractable claws, whiskers. I'm kind of curious by these type of things when it's just, I know it's just a normal story, but when looking at how large the implications could be, it's something I am really interested in investing in. But also I'm trying to think how, ooh, ooh, okay, I'm trying to think. How would I react if Tamamo no Mai was real and popped up in South Africa? I know South Africa is 100% safe from every single demonic attack from all over the world. We have Limpopo. Limpopo is a province or it's, um, it's a state in South Africa where the witchcraft rate is supposedly higher than the crime rate. Yeah, 
I know if, if Tamamo no Mai were to ever come to South Africa, we're safe. We, we kind of have like an immediate protection. However, I don't know how I would react if I saw Tamamo no Mai in real life. Like if I looked at her face to face, would I compliment her? Would I be afraid? I, I have no idea. It's kind of those things where everybody will be like, oh yeah, if this happens, I'm definitely gonna do this until the situation actually happens. And then you somehow freeze like a little bitch. So I don't know. I think I'll try and do my best to be on Tamama no Mai's good side. I I'm done ranting about this. Uh, before I think I my I think the issue with this is I thought too deeply. I am overthinking this because I like the idea of an actual spiritual being just wandering around, doing whatever the fuck it's doing. Who knows? Probably it's gonna be like Miss Kobayashi's dragon maid. Tamamo is like chilling around in somebody's house as a maid or actually I doubt Tamamo is going to just willingly be a maid She'd probably be the one to dominate the household regardless I like I like what ideas we can get from this and I know I'm possibly not even possibly I'm definitely overthinking this whole situation But at the end of the day, that's kind of what we do on this channel we rant and we overthink situations. I really want to hear people's thoughts on this. I want a conversation around this because I'm overthinking, right? And there's probably some things that I've missed mentally. So I want people to actually look at the situation and give me your thoughts. What would you do if Tamamo no Mai is an actual like creature wandering the streets of Japan, wandering real life, probably plotting a Shibuya, Shibuya arc moment where she's just going to kill a lot of people. And what would you do if you came face to face with Tamamo? What like so here are the questions I I want you to answer in the comment section. One, what would you do if you saw Tamamo no Mai face to face? Two, if you do not believe in the spiritual, like let's say you're atheist, and now we have suddenly have hardcore proof that um, the supernatural exists, what would you do? Three, uh, would you try and smash? <laughs> That's a question I definitely need people to ask, uh, answer. Would you smash? Four, would you go to Japan and try and be a spirit hunter? Because, again, I have a feeling that a lot of people would try and be spirit hunters. Like, would you want to delve into the spiritual world? And if so, why? Why not? Personally, I am on the fence. I would say yes, I want to. However, I want to say yes, I want to because of like, I'll get like spiritual powers. Yay, cool. And I'll get to protect my family and all of that, like that all bullshit, right? But I also want to say no, because again, we don't know how strong these demons we'd be facing. You could rock up be like, yeah, I'm going to kill you. They just wave their finger and you're dead. <laughs> That's, that's something I'm not looking forward to. Because, yeah, even though I might, like, be a sorcerer, Jujutsu sorcerer, or reaper, or whatever. I do n I'm not a main character. This whole main character syndrome thing, I don't think I'd be that lucky where I just have plot on my side. This is real life. Because most likely, I'm just gonna get bodied. I'm gonna get folded by these demons. That's why I don't want to be interacting with them. But I would love to know your reactions. I would like to know your comments. Would you smash this beautiful woman on the screen? Who knows? Sorry this video is so long. I just overthought. Be ever wonderful. This has been Biscord signing out. Bye.